today we're going to talk about hyperbolas. Um, now, hyperbolas, uh, I have a couple of definitions on here, so make sure you, you get those down. Uh, hyperbolas are the set of all points whose difference in distance from two fixed points called foci uh, is constant. I've underlined difference because a hyperbola is very similar to an ellipse, where in, on an ellipse, we said that you know we have these two foci, and then if I take any point on the ellipse, and I calculate this distance, we call it like d1, calculate this distance, call it d2, then d1 plus d2 is always constant, right? It's always equal to some constant c. Now, in a hyperbola, d1 minus d2 is always equal to some constant c. You can, you know, it doesn't matter what order this is, so you can just say absolute value uh, if you'd like. Uh, and this is true. So hyperbolas are kind of the opposite of ellipses. Okay? Uh, vertices are the two points in the hyperbola on a line with the foci. Um, you'll, I'll label all of these uh, in a moment. And you'll, you know, be able to see it in a picture, which will be uh, helpful, I think. Um, so yeah, two points in the hyperbola on a line with the foci. Transverse axis is the line segment that joins the two vertices, and the center is the midpoint of the transverse axis. So I'm going to get rid of everything here in just a moment. So make sure you pause the video if you would like to finish writing this down. Okay, and I'm going to sketch a hyperbola. So, um, the hyperbola can have two standard forms, just like an ellipse. One standard form can be x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And the other standard form is y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. So remember, for ellipses, uh, we flip the a and the b, and x and y always stay in the same spot. For hyperbolas, it's the opposite, um, where what's happening here is a and b are fixed. Um, a is always going to be the uh, underneath the positive term. B is always going to be with the negative term. Okay, So here, there's no special relationship where A must always be greater than B. That is not true for hyperbolas, only for ellipses. Um, now, this generates two different hyperbolas. One of them uh, is going to generate uh, a hyperbola that opens to the left and right and has a horizontal transverse axis. That's going to be the one on the left. Um, whenever my x term is positive, I will have a horizontal transverse axis. When my y term is positive, I will have a vertical transverse axis. So what does that look like? Well, if I draw the one on the left first, um, I'm going to label my vertices. The vertices are still going to be a distance a from the center. So I'll do this. Um, so this point would be a0. And this point would be negative a0. And then this is going to be my center. This here, this segment here, is my transverse axis. So it's not a real thing that's on the hyperbola. Um, it's just something for us to talk about so uh, we can um, you know, discuss the direction that the hyperbola opens in. Um, and then our foci are going to be actually farther from the origin than uh, our vertices are, unlike on ellipsis. This is negative c0 and c0. Um, now, what does B do? Because on an ellipse, B are the endpoints of the minor axis, but a hyperbola doesn't really have a minor axis. B is actually super valuable because uh, in order to sketch a hyperbola accurately, um, we sketch asymptotes that the hyperbola approaches. So for a hyperbola that has a horizontal transverse axis, the asymptotes are given by y equals positive or negative b over a times x. And if you have a vertical transverse axis, then the asymptotes are given by y equals positive or negative a over b times x. What that means is we can get a really accurate picture of the ellipse because I've sketched my a, uh, my vertices. And if I draw my b's, so let's say I have a b like here and here. So this point is 0, b. And this point is 0, negative b. Then what I can do is I can sketch a box. And what this is going to let me do is if I draw the diagonals of this rectangle, uh, then that will be the asymptotes of this hyperbola. Because um, you know the box has a height of b and a width of a. Now this obviously is drawn really, really poorly, so I'm sorry. Uh, nonetheless, the asymptotes, right, are going to go 
through here like this. Now remember the asymptotes are not real things that are on the hyperbola. They are just gonna help us to sketch the hyperbola accurately. They should go through the corners uh, if I drew this correctly. So then we have our, our hyperbola, which will go like this. Let me try to draw that a little better. Here, like that. And on this side, I have something like this. These obviously should be symmetrical if I had drawn them reasonably well. Uh, and that, that's a hyperbola. Um, so whenever you're sketching hyperbola, really important to draw this box. This box is going to help you to um, sketch something that is accurate to what the hyperbola is. Okay. If you have a, you know, the situation on the right where you have a vertical transverse axis, very, very, very similar situation. So we have our A, you draw the B, so we have A, A, B, B, you draw your dotted line. Then you draw your asymptotes. And then your axis is transverse. Remember A are your vertices, so then my hyperbola is gonna look like this. Like that, okay? Now again, all of these hyperbolas are drawn horrendously, and I'm sorry, but this is generally how you wanna go about doing it. Sketch the box. Label your vertices, your B values. Be sure to include your C values as well. Um, you know, some of these are obviously supposed to be negative. Uh, and then go ahead and sketch the hyperbola. Okay. So let's look at an example that has some actual numbers in it. Let's say that I have um, this equation. I have x squared over 16 minus y squared uh, over 9 equals 1. And what I want to do is I want to graph it, and I want to locate the foci. Now, to look at the foci, um, you might recall that ellipses had a relationship between a, b, and c, a Pythagorean relationship. Hyperbolas also have that relationship. Um, in the last video, I proved it, but I'm going to leave this one um, for you to try to prove. Uh, you can do it in a similar way to the ellipse one, um, but I would like to see, uh, I think it, it, it is always beneficial to go through and try to do it yourself. Um, you come, and, come and see me if you are having issues and you want me to go through it with you, but um, try to make sure that you, you, know, you can prove it yourself. And here's the relationship that you're trying to prove. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay, so this is a four I hyperbola. This is not true for an ellipse. For an ellipse, uh, we swap some of these letters around, but this is true for a hyperbola. So what that means is I can look at this and say, okay, a squared is 16, b squared is 9, 16 plus 9 is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. So c, in this case, is equal to 5. And now I have everything I need to graph it. This is going to have a horizontal transverse axis because this term is positive. So uh, a is equal to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My foci are going to be there. Here is my a value, my vertice, vertex. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I sketch my box, right, to help me draw my asymptotes. So this is my b value. These are drawn poorly as usual. Here we go. Try to make this look okay. Now once you have this, you can sketch your asymptotes, which in theory are lines and not bent like that one, but that's okay. Here we go. So just do this to help me kind of, okay. okay. And then I know that this uh, has a horizontal transverse axis, so then my hyperbola will look like this. And like this. Okay, 
And that's how you go ahead and sketch, uh, you locate the foci first, right, using the Pythagorean relationship, and then you can graph it and make sure you label all the key points as well. Don't just draw them and leave them blank like I did here. Uh, actually label and say, oh, this point is, you know, four, zero, and this point is five, zero, and so on and so forth. Make sure you label all the vertices and the B values and the foci. Okay, now you can also go in the other direction, right? Just like you can for an ellipse, where if I give you the uh, foci and the vertices, then I would expect you to be able to generate the equation. So let's say I have a hyperbola, which has foci at zero and positive negative three, and vertices at zero, positive negative two. What's gonna be the equation? Well, I know C is equal to three, A is equal to two, and I know that B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared from the previous relationship. So that means that nine minus four is equal to b squared, so b squared is equal to five. Once I have this, I can write my equation. Um, I'm told here, right, that my uh, transverse axis is going to be vertical because my vertices are located along the y-axis. So that means that my y squared term is gonna be positive. So I have y squared over four, right, a is two, minus x squared over b squared is five, so five equals one. And I could go ahead and graph this if I, if I so desired, okay? So that's how you go in the other direction. Now, let's look at hyperbolas that are not centered at the origin. Let's say we have a hyperbola that is centered at HK. Okay, so we're gonna make a little table here. So we have the standard equation, standard form equation. We're gonna have um, our transverse axis. We're gonna talk about how the foci change. Uh, same with the vertices. And the asymptotes. So for a standard form equation, we can have two, right? We can have a positive x term. So that would be x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals one. Or we could have a positive y term. y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals one. The transverse axis uh, for the top one is going to be parallel to the x-axis. No longer is the x-axis is parallel to it. And this one would be parallel to the y-axis. The foci are going to shift um, by the amount of the center. So the foci are going to be h plus or minus c k for when my transverse axis is horizontal. And my transverse axis is vertical, it's gonna be h, uh, k plus or minus a. Vertices, oh, I'm sorry, not a, um, c. I'm already thinking ahead to the vertices. The vertices are the same thing, but instead of c, you have a, right? So my vertices are gonna be h plus or minus a, k, and h, uh, k plus or minus a, okay? And then the asymptotes, the asymptotes tram in the, transform in the exact same way. I'm going to shift my x-coordinates, all the x-coordinates of the point uh, of the line by h units and I, uh, horizontally, and I want to shift the y values k vertically. So here, my y value is going to be equal to k plus or minus b over a times x minus h. And down here, it's going to be y equals k plus or minus a over b, x minus h. And this would be the equations of the asymptotes, okay? So pause the video if you need to, if you need to get all this stuff down. Um, and then we're going to look at an example with uh, a hyperbola that does not have its center at the origin.
So let's look at uh, another example where I want to graph and um, locate the foci. My equation is going to be x minus 3 squared divided by 4 minus y minus 1 squared divided by 1 equals 1. And uh, one other thing we'll get to is uh, let's find the asymptotes. I'll also find the equations of those. Okay. So once I have a and b, right, I know a here is 2, b is 1. That means that c squared is going to be equal to 10, uh, and that c is the square root of 10. Okay. Uh, now I can write down the equation of the asymptotes. The asymptotes are going to be y equals 1, plus or minus. Um, this has its transverse axis along the horizontal, right? You can see that because the x term is positive. So it's going to be b over a. So 1 over 2 times x minus 3. Uh, and remember, this is an equation of two different lines, one with a plus, one with a minus. And now we can sketch it. So I'm going to have my center at 3, 1. And I draw a pretty bad grass. OK, that's my center. Uh, my vertices are going to be located 2 to the right and 2 to the left of this point. So I'll draw a little more in there. My box is one below and one above, so here and here. So I can draw my box. The, you know, the bottom of the box is along the x-axis. And I can draw my asymptotes, which are these equations, 1 plus or minus 1 half times x minus 3. So it'll be like that. And something like this. Uh, my foci, uh, square root of 10. So, you know, that's about 3 away. It's a little bit more than 3 away. So 1, 2, 3 is like right here. Same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, a little bit further. And then I draw my hyperbola. It's a pretty, feels like a pretty narrow hyperbola. Oops. There you go. So again, another terrible hyperbola drawing by me, um, but that's the process. Draw the box, make sure you label all your points, draw your asymptotes, and sketch in the hyperbola. And the only thing that changes when the center is not at the origin is, uh, you know, just where you're starting from, right? You do all the stuff exactly the same. It's just now we're starting from three one instead of from zero zero. So that is how you do everything with hyperbolas. And thanks for watching.